This mini PC supports docking station for external graphics card and promises to be as good as a desktop computer at a much better price. So is GTI 13 Ultra that good? Let's inspect. Hey buddy, welcome to the channel, I'm the Tech Mishka and if you want to buy the best in class mini computer and still want to keep it at a meaningful budget, it's hard to oversee this. Something coming from the company B-Link, it's called the GTI 13 Ultra, probably for the time being of the review I'm just going to call it the GTI 13, something hosting the best in class from Intel and ability to attach external GPU in a way that it feels like internal, meaning no bandwidth loss. And how is this possible and whether the performance is really that good? It's exactly what I want to showcase in this review. Let's dive into it. And even before we get to cover the hardware specs and the details, let's talk about performance. Because after all, it is what you care about the most. I'm gonna start with the benchmarks. While being boring, they're industry accepted checkpoints that give us a good idea how a specific product ranks. Given the fact that here we have Intel Core i9 CPU technology, expectedly, performance is very, very solid. This is among the best mobile CPUs that Intel have released to date, and although manufactured on slightly older silicon size, it certainly delivers decent performance. Since this is a mini PC and not a laptop, spending some more watts on top of what a similar AMD setup is going to propose is something we can ignore given the price point. Perhaps the Cinebench results could have been slightly higher, I've seen scores close to 20,000 for this particular model. Note that most of these tests I've performed without external GPU. Adding such one immediately turns the GTI 13 Ultra into an even bigger and hungrier beast, so sky is the limit, depending on the GPU of your choice and budget. The mini PC literally flies when it comes to intensive tasks, and at moments I even have the feeling that it is on par with my editing PC station, which runs desktop-grade components, of course, and costs significantly more. I haven't forgotten about gaming. Since we can attach a GPU, this is even more fun and deserves to be praised. Now, let's be clear about it. With the plain configuration, the i9-13900HK is just average and easily roasted by Ryzen processors with 680M or 780M or newer Radeon iGPUs. The Iris Xe inside this Intel is almost twice weaker, yet alright for running Counter-Strike 2 with very optimized 1080p graphics. Anything heavier than that is gonna be a struggle. Add the EX docking station with any of NVIDIA's current RTX series and welcome to a brand new world. It's actually quite the deal, because not only comes with a 600W inbuilt power supply, but gives you a slot for extra NVMe and expands the wireless antennas. So for the launch price of around $150, it is a win-win situation. But remember, compatibility is limited only to the Beeling GTI series and unlikely going to be compatible with other Windows-based mini-computers. Provides 8-lane PCI Express bandwidth, understand lossless linkage to the GPU as opposed to the X4 typically provided by alternative technologies such as Oculink. So yeah, this is definitely the right choice if you're looking to get cost-efficient, yet reliable and well-performing gaming solution. Keep in mind that the FPS numbers that you see here are based on the RTX 2060 and perhaps right now the best option on a budget would be Intel's ARC B580, which I'm still waiting for. Let us for a moment move away from all of these tests and talk about the design and the build quality. B-Link already have a name for quite decent builds and this model is no exception to the rule. It's the Frost Silver Edition and the aluminium material surrounding it not only looks cool but also keeps the internal components cool. The GTI 13 series are a bit bigger than average size mini PC, yet maintaining dimensions in a way that we can still call it mini. On the front, a power button which also hosts a fingerprint scanner, Type-C port, even SD card slots, and these little holes are the microphone array. On the rear side, there's even more HDMI, a display port, dual LAN setup, a few USBs and even Thunderbolt. Apparently the power supply is integrated and we're gonna take a look at it in just a moment. 
As for the build quality, I can only express positive impressions. Likely the nicest feeling B-Link model I've ever tried, but apparently doesn't support VESA mounting. That's a bummer. If we check the tech specifications, then besides the 14-core processor, we can highlight the up to 96GB supported memory DDR5, the Intel Iris XE graphics, the support for up to 4 monitors, there is Wi-Fi 6 module, Bluetooth 5.2, vapor chamber-based cooling system, fingerprint sensor, a speaker and microphones are present too, and uh, sure, it runs Windows 11 Professional Edition. Yes, the specifications of the GTI 13 Ultra are excellent. Over here we talk about uh, one of the best mobile CPUs that Intel have ever designed and released. And at the time of making the video, the only better option is the successor 14900HX. But it's a lot more expensive at this point of time and not that much faster. Meaning the 13900, the HK edition, is currently the sweet spot when it comes to fantastic performance and rather acceptable price. Other than that, we also have very decent quality of the RAM, excellent implementation of storage. Well, the Wi-Fi module could have been a little bit faster. And they're also uh, at the bottom over here, it's a very nice implementation of a dual speaker system, which sounds actually pretty good. And uh, yes, I would agree, specs are not everything. It's about the complete kind of experience. Therefore, I want us to carry on, do some more digging, do a teardown and figure out how much of that we can repair and whether any upgrades are possible at all. Accessing the internals is possible if you remove the bottom cover. Better don't do this at home if you're not at least somewhat experienced with hardware assembly. Lift the cover up and here are the speakers and the power supply, the major reason about the increased weight of the unit. It is inbuilt, but something you can potentially replace in case needed. Underneath, two slots for RAM and 96 gigabytes is the maximum supported amount. Two four-lane NVMe slots, PCI Express Generation 4, meaning that there are no restrictions about the speed and you can run up to 8 terabytes internal storage. Access to the wireless module is apparently possible too. In order to get to the processor, it's gonna be a lot more challenging because it is on the other side of the board. So repairing or upgrading the RAM, the storage or the Wi-Fi module is possible. If the system board or the processor fail, then then you're gonna be in trouble. Seeing the AX200 by Intel, namely the wireless module, makes me want to bring us back into the testing mode. It is fast, but just Wi-Fi 6 fast, speeds are consistent, and wireless reception appears to be quite decent. Bluetooth is at version 5.2, certainly not the latest and greatest, but more than enough for taking advantage of most of the Bluetooth-based peripherals. We've already explored most of the physical ports. Let me just remind you that you can connect a few monitors simultaneously and also the Thunderbolt port, which is USB 4 capable as well. And yeah, that's another way to connect external GPU in case you have such kind of a cage. If you wonder how effective the cooling system is, it is decent. The CPU won't get too high temperatures and keeps it cool most of the time. Even if you stress it for prolonged periods of time, GTI 13 Ultra remains quiet. Inside the BIOS, B-Link once again are generous about configuration. Looks like you can lower the TDP after all, going down to 54, which is not gonna impact performance that much and should make the setup even quieter, but I would keep it at the default 65. Since I haven't talked much about use cases, well, the GTI 13 comes really close to a desktop computer, especially if you get it with the EX docking station. Therefore, you have quite many options. In my opinion, this is the right kind of mini PC if you want to count on a great gaming setup at a small scale. The same is valid for video and graphics editors and people who sometimes need the power of a true GPU. In its standalone version, this processor remains one of the best on the market and will for sure remain relevant for at least several years. Given the possibility to grow in terms of RAM, I'd recommend the GTI 13 Ultra for its great hardware specs and ability to get upgraded over time and still maintaining a very reasonable price. 
but if you just need an office PC or something that is going to help you to watch videos, browse online, code or just cover the basics, then likely you may want to save some hard-earned dollars and look into some other budget-friendlier products. Concerning drawbacks, this time the list is going to be very short. The lack of Oculink support, which given the expansion option, not that important. The slightly older generation of Bluetooth used. And if you think of anything else, feel free to add it in the comments below. See, uh, the scale could have been a little bit smaller, but given everything that we have tested, yeah, probably we can excuse the few more centimeters and weight that Beelink have focused inside the GTI 13 Ultra. And um, I think it's a very interesting device and overall no surprise why the GTI line by Beelink is their most successful portfolio. It's actually where they implement all the new features that later on spread across their entire portfolio. So if you ask me whether the GTI 13 Ultra is worth it? It's like that. I would say totally, not just because of the excellent specifications. And by the way, this is the only Intel mini PC from the past months that I actually enjoyed while testing. Uh, I think the most remarkable part is that you can add an external GPU through the EX docking station that actually appears like something you attach internally because no bandwidth loss and you have full advantage of your entire graphics card capacity without the restrictions of Oculink or Thunderbolt or uh, USB Type-C Generation 4 connectivity. So yeah, it's really good to have this option as a very tiny way to get pure gaming station of your choice. Uh, and that's everything I wanted to share with you in regard to the GTI 13. If you like the concept and the idea and you're on the hunt for your next mini PC, check some more information in the video description where you can also find a link to the product with a discount. And if you decide to use my link, it's an affiliate one, meaning no extra cost to you. But if you decide to buy the product, small percentage out of that goes in direction improving and funding the channel. Thanks very much for watching till the end. If that was interesting and useful, give me a like, subscribe for more cool tech inspections, and I, Michael, wish you a fantastic day. Hope to see you very soon. Bye.